Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I wanted to take you on a little tour of what's inside my wardrobe. In the past couple of videos I've mentioned briefly that I've been taking a more considered, more intentional approach to fashion and to shopping recently and I wanted to show you the results of that so far. So recently I did quite a big clear out of my wardrobe picked out all of the items that I just don't love anymore, that don't fit me, that just don't spark joy. Um, and I've sold most of those, currently still in the process of selling a few on Vinted. So I'm left with a much smaller wardrobe. I've actually counted up the number of items in there for you. And I can tell you that I have 38 pieces of clothing. So that includes clothes, belts and bags. It doesn't include jewellery or shoes. But yeah, 38 items in total. So a pretty minimal wardrobe as far as most people I know goes, especially people who are interested in fashion and personal style. So I wanted to give you a tour of inside my wardrobe because this is currently in a state where pretty much everything in there I absolutely love. There are a couple of exceptions and I will tell you about those later. But just to show you that you can curate a small wardrobe of things that you love. You don't have to be constantly buying at places like H&M, like Zara. You can limit yourself to a certain number of items or a certain budget each month and just buy things that you absolutely love and that are of higher quality and more sustainably and ethically made. So without further ado I will open up the door and we'll have a little look inside. So we have most of the things that I own are hung up here. I do have some things at the bottom which you might not be able to see now but I will show you in a second but that is mainly my accessories and also my knitwear which I don't like to hang. But everything else is hung up and everything else I can see really clearly when I open it up in the morning. It's pretty easy to pick things out um, and I've tried to, to make my wardrobe versatile in a way that most things go with each other so I can have quite an easy time getting dressed these days. So I will talk you through some of my favourite and least favourite items, tell you a little bit of the story behind some of the clothes um, and show you what it's like to own a 38 piece wardrobe. So let's start off at one of my favourite sections which is dresses. So I have some midi dresses and I have quite a few mini dresses as well. So I have three midi dresses in total. I have this white spotty one which was from last year from Miss Selfridge. I wore this loads last summer and I'm thinking I'll get quite a lot of wear out of it this summer as well, so I'm keeping it for now. I also have my Cezanne Victoria dress. I love this, I love the pattern, I love the shape. I can't wait to crack that out when it gets a little warmer. I haven't had a chance to wear it yet because it's been so damn miserable in England lately, but hopefully soon I'll be wearing that. And then I have this dress. This is from YAS. This is a midi dress again, um, and this is just so lovely. YS is a brand that I do occasionally find some real gems from. I think their stuff is a little bit hit or miss in the sense that a lot of their um, silhouettes are quite oversized, they're quite long, they're quite baggy, and I don't always find their clothes the most flattering, but occasionally I'll find a piece that fits perfectly and I absolutely love. I love the silhouette of this in particular. It's really floaty, but it's just, it really hugs you in at the waist and then just drapes down beautifully. I love the length of the sleeves and I love the fairly deep v-neck as well. The pattern is a blue background with um, pink flowers on it so it's pretty feminine um, but I really like that and you can toughen it up a little by putting a leather jacket over it which I quite often do and it's just one of those dresses that you can chuck on, you know it's going to look good, you know it's going to feel comfortable and it just looks so effortless but at the same time quite quite um you know done up and like you've you've thought about your outfit when you really haven't so those are my longer dresses my midi dresses i don't own many because i only wear them in the late spring summer time so i don't have a huge amount of time to get the wear out of them so i don't feel like i need many in my collection i do have a few more mini dresses though 
So I have, I think, four in total now. I have recently uh, sold quite a few. Um, and the reason I like to have a few more mini dresses is because I find them a little bit more versatile in terms of the seasons because you can wear some of them with tights in the winter, autumn, winter, and then without tights in the summer. Um, so an example of one I wear a lot in the winter is this black one. I actually wouldn't wear this in the summer because it's black, but in the winter with tights, it looks lovely. Um, and it's it's kind of dressed that in my line of work, I can get away with wearing this. It's long enough. It's actually from the tall section um, from old Topshop, RIP. Um, but yeah, so so it's it's just above the knee, which is kind of in my sector okay to get away with. It's long sleeved, so it's quite modest. And it just, because of the colouring, it looks really good with black tights and a big coat over the top. So I do wear this quite a lot in the winter and it's just a good staple to have. The other mini dresses I own are much more spring summery ones. I have a couple from And Other Stories. This one is And Other Stories last year. I love this pattern, pink and purple. And this blue one you might have seen in my And Other Stories video. This is from this year. Um, so I can link this one down below. Now, the most beautiful dress I have in my collection, probably the most beautiful piece of clothing I have in general is this next dress. Yeah, I have no words for how beautiful this is. So this is a dress from Faithful the brand, which is a brand I have looked at for a number of years and absolutely loved some of the things they do. They're a little bit expensive, um, but the quality is pretty good. I, th I think the quality has improved recently. Um, they used to use a lot of rayon, which is an okay material, but it's not great, but they've moved towards uh, making many more dresses out of cotton and linen. This is 100% linen, so it does feel quite thick, but not in a way that it's going to be too heavy for summer, just in a way that it feels like it's going to hang really nicely, which it does. It does have a cotton lining as well. And it's just beautiful. The, the pattern is just, it's giving me Mediterranean, Italy, Greece, in the summer, going for dinner. I don't know when that's gonna happen to me, <laughs> probably in about five years time, um, given the current situation. But one day I will wear this in Italy, I guarantee you. Um, and I will show you on this channel. So yeah, I've, I've, I think it's one of those dresses that I will save primarily for holidays because it is, it just has that vibe. I think there's definitely a place for this to be worn in England. I'm thinking like, a wedding, it's not too white, I, I don't think, to wear to a wedding, um, or a garden party, something a little bit more formal because it does have that that formal feel to it um, and just very summery as well. But yeah, this is probably the, the my favourite piece of clothing that I own, but I haven't got to wear it yet, but I will soon, hopefully. Okay, so moving on, we have jackets next. I just have two jackets in here. Now I am cheating a little bit because I do own two other coats. I own a waterproof coat that I use for dog walking and a puffer coat that I pretty much just chuck on in the winter when it's freezing. Um, so I'm kind of um, cheating by not including them, but they're not really part of my clothing. They're just like dog walking essentials. So yeah, these are my two nice jackets. My Willa jacket from Cezanne, which I showed in my uh, recent Cezanne video. This has become my favorite chuck on jacket. Perfect for this time of year for spring. It just, it goes with everything in my wardrobe pretty much. And I just love the way it looks. I love how casual it is, how easy it is to wear. I love that I can chuck in my keys and my face mask and these pockets and I'm ready to go. So this was definitely a good purchase from Suzanne. And the next jacket I have in here is my leather jacket. Now my leather jacket holds a special place in my heart because it is definitely the most expensive piece of clothing in my wardrobe. Um, I bought it two years ago now um, and I don't regret it at all. It cost me about £240, something like that. I'll show you it now. So this is it. It's just a fairly minimal looking leather jacket. It's from Massimo Duty and I just love it. It's the perfect cut. It fits me perfectly. And I love the fact that it has gold hardware, which is really hard to come across in 
um, leather jackets. Almost all of them have silver. And although I like silver and I like silver jewellery, I feel like silver on a biker, a leather jacket, makes it look like a biker jacket. It makes it look quite tough, quite edgy, which is not really my style. My style was a little bit more feminine than that. So having the gold hardware just softens the jacket a lot and makes it look more fe feminine and look more you know, suitable to my style and my wardrobe. So I love this, I've worn it loads. Um, and it's just something that I feel like hopefully I'll have in my wardrobe forever. So I'm kind of gonna skim past this next section because it's not the most exciting. Um, and that's my tops. So I have a few tops, but nothing that really brings me a huge amount of joy at the moment. It's an area in my wardrobe I'm looking to find some better pieces for. Um, I'm just taking my time and really not rushing into any purchases. At the moment I have two blouses, neither of which I love. Um, this one is polyester. It's a little bit difficult to tuck in, which I prefer to do with it. And overall I just don't reach for it. Um, I'm keeping it in here for now because it is really good for work when I have to go to in-person meetings or events again, which is probably gonna happen soon. I know I will be reaching for that because it's one of my only options. Um, and the same with the red one, I just don't love it. It's it's just a bit bleh. Um, I don't know how much it suits me. And I don't love the, it has like shirred cuffs. Don't love that. And I also don't love the neckline. Can you see, it's just really odd. It's like trying to be a V-neck, but it's not a V-neck. It's like a rounded V-neck and it just sits really awkwardly. You can tell it's not very well made because of the way it sits on the shoulders. You can tell on the hanger as well, it's like kind of lopsided and funny and just doesn't ever look quite right. So I'm selling this one, it's actually currently on my Vinted if you're interested. <laughs> if the wonky neckline doesn't put, put you off then it is a little bit of a bargain. Um, it's 100% viscose, so it's not a terrible material but I just don't love it and I know I could find something much better but like I said I'm just really taking my time and trying to find things that are perfect so holding out until I find the perfect blouse um, that I could replace this with. T-shirts I have quite a few of none of which are super inspiring they're just basics. Stripey I have um, I quite like blue as you can tell I've got navy I've got light blue stripey this one is probably my favourite. This is actually a recent addition from Cezanne. This is a linen t-shirt. Um, it's really sheer. That's the only thing I would say if you're thinking about getting one of these. Um, it's really, really sheer, but I don't mind for the summer. I think just with like a nude bra underneath, it's not a big deal. Um, but the embroidery is really lovely on this. Um, and I like the V-neck. I just, I just like this. I bought this in, in a size up. I bought this in a large um, because the sleeves are pretty short, so if you're thinking about buying this, just be aware that you might want to size up because they're quite, they're not overly loose in terms of t-shirt sleeves. Um, and I like it being a little bit floaty and a little bit more casual, so I would say size up maybe on this one, but I re would recommend it, it's really nice to wear. And then the next few items, again, don't bring me a huge amount of joy. They're things that I keep in here mainly for work purposes. So I have a couple of pairs of trousers one of which still has the label on because I really am not a massive fan of the way they fit. But yeah, they're kind of essential um, for when I go back to work in person. So they're in there for now, but I am looking to replace them. So if you know any good brands for pear shaped, kind of bigger hipped women in terms of trousers, like sort of work appropriate trousers, um, then let me know because I would be interested in trying some. And then we move on to my favorite section, which is denim. Denim is what I choose to wear 90% of the time. It is just my dream, I love denim. So I have all of my jeans hung up because I only have one, two, three, four, five, five pairs now, six pairs. I can't do maths, I think six pairs. Um, so I don't have too many at the moment because I got rid of all of the ones that I didn't love. I had a couple that had stretched out and I used to love a couple of years ago, but because they were cheaper, they'd kind of sagged a bit at the knees and at the waist. So I decided to sell those and only keep the ones that I absolutely love. It happens that all the ones I love are Levi's. So I have a complete Levi's collection, um, but they're just the ones that I like. I find that they're really good quality. They last well. They fit well if you get the right size and you get the right composition. 
Um, if you see my Levi's video, you'll know what I mean. Um, but on the whole, I do really like them. So I have a few different styles. I have the 501 cropped. These are the first pair of Levi's I bought. So these are a um, yeah, cropped pair of 501s. They're so versatile. They're kind of like a straight leg. Um, they're a little bit tighter on me than they probably should be because I have bigger legs, but I like them and I just find that they're so easy to wear. I then have my Levi's uh, rib cage. So I have the light wash pair here and then I'm wearing the dark wash pair at the moment. I love these, they're my favorite jeans at the moment. Yeah, can't say enough good things about them. I then have another pair of 501 cropped. Um, these have a frayed edge. They're also one size bigger than the other pair. So they're kind of my around the house, slouchy, loose jeans if I wanna be comfortable. Um, and then I also have this pair, which again are the 501 cropped, but they're 100% cotton, whereas the other ones have elastane in them. So these ones don't really fit me. Um, I got a 29 waist and they're perfect like on the leg. They're exactly the kind of bagginess that I want, but they're too big on the waist. So I'm actually gonna go and get these tailored. I've been saying that for the last couple of months, so I really need to get around to doing it, but um, I am gonna do it eventually because I think if I get an inch off the waist, they're gonna be perfect. So I will let you know the results of that and maybe do a video on it if you're interested because I've never had anything tailored before. So I'm kind of nervous and kind of like, is this gonna work? Is this gonna be my solution to finding trousers and jeans that fit me? Uh, maybe. So I will report back on that, but I'm currently not really wearing them because they are just way too big on the waist. And then the final pair of denim I have is just a pair of shorts. So these are just shorts I bought last year. These are from Next. They're a pretty bog standard pair of blue shorts. I like them because they're not too short. They're not like um, short shorts, what are they called? I don't know, hot pants. Um, they're just a, you know, a good pair of denim shorts. And I only really wear these on holiday or if it's really hot in England, but they're good to have. And they're definitely something that I, I think I should have in my wardrobe. So yeah, got those as well. So those are all the clothes I have hung up. The only other thing I have are my bags. The bags I own, I, all, I keep all in here because I only have three. So I have this tote bag. This is from Ted Baker. This was a birthday present, um, I wanna say two years ago from my parents. This is good for work. It's good for like a little overnight stay. It's good for when I need to carry more than a few things. So I like this a lot. Um, I then have two smaller bags in here. So I have this bag, which I've actually had. This is one of the oldest things in my wardrobe. I've had this for five year, four or five years. Um, this is a Topshop bag. Um, it's a suede, I think it's real suede, um, suede and leather red bag. Um, I really loved this when I bought it and I haven't worn it in quite a while. I think because of the red, I think, I think red was quite trendy a few years ago and now I'm, I'm less into it, but I haven't sold it because I think it still has potential and I think there will be a time where I want to wear this and it's, it's just quite nice and quite sweet so yeah I've got that one and then the other bag I have in my bag of bags is my basket bag which I love I've had this for two years this is from ASOS I think um, it's a fairly inexpensive little round basket bag um, and I love this for the summer for, for holidays um, yeah, it's just a nice little bag. It's really awkward to put things in because it tends to open up and then everything falls out, but it's cute. Well, now pan down and I'll show you what's at the bottom of my wardrobe. So at the bottom, I just keep my knitwear, as I said. I also keep my jewellery, which is all on this jewellery organiser here. And I keep my belts, which are in this white bag here. Um, and that's basically it. So I have my knitwear in, categorised in two different piles. I have my neutral knitwear in this pile here. So I have um, the jumper I'm wearing now, my Leontine from Cezanne normally sits in this pile. Um, I also have another Cezanne knit. I have the Cezanne Martha jumper or cardigan. I love this, it's just a cream um, jumper that can be worn open as a cardigan or buttoned up. And then I have a and a beigey jumper from H&M, which is a couple of years old. And then I have my coloured knitwear, which is essentially my pink jumpers because <laughs> I have two and they're both pink. Um, I have my Cezanne fluffy Alyssa cardigan, 
and then I have a lighter pink jumper underneath from YAS again and then I have my belts so for someone who hardly ever wears belts I have a weird amount of belts for someone with a minimalist wardrobe because I don't wear these very often but I, I, I like to keep them because they're kind of timeless I have my Cezanne Jacks belt which is my braided woven belt that I got recently from Cezanne and then I have some um, more inexpensive belts that I've picked up over the past couple of years nothing too exciting I've got a leather belt from and other stories a light brown leather belt and then I have a black belt and a neutral belt. I think these were from Oasis, just cheap ones. I don't think they're real leather. So I just like to keep those because they do come in handy from time to time. I don't often wear belts with jeans. I mainly wear them with shorts or with dresses, but I feel like this is quite a small amount in terms of storing them. So I feel like I don't need to declutter any of them at the moment. The thing I have is my jewelry and I'm gonna show you that in a separate video. So if you're interested, that might already be up on my channel but yeah that's all the jewellery I own so quite a minimal selection as well and then I have my purse just for easy grab and go and I have this little pouch which came with my Ted Baker bag um, and this has my hair accessories in it so I have quite a few um, scrunchies cute little scrunchies I also have these hair bands um, yeah so I like to keep these all together in here so I can grab them and choose one so I found that that's quite a good storage solution for those items as well. So that's all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed having a little look inside my wardrobe and maybe it's given you some inspiration to declutter your own wardrobe and live with a more minimal selection of clothes. Um, I know it's, it's challenging for me as well. I often find myself lusting after loads of different things and I have to remind myself that that's not gonna work with my small wardrobe. Do I really wanna look after those clothes, wash them, keep them clean, steam them? Do you know what I mean? Like when you buy something, it's not just the monetary price that you're paying, it's also the time that you're putting into caring for that item. Especially if you're buying more expensive things that you want to look after and keep for a long time. So that's always what I have in my mind when I'm tempted to buy something new. And I definitely do buy new things. You've seen in my past few videos, I've bought some new things, but I just make sure that it's something that I know I want to keep for a decent amount of time or something that will hold its, its value and I can sell on for um, a good price if I feel like I might only want it for a year or two. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, do subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more fashion videos from me. I'm gonna be doing lots more in the future. Um, I'm really excited that we've already passed over 100 subscribers. So thank you so much if you've subscribed already. And I will hope to see all of you in my next video.